First of all, I've just got a few words to say about Christopher Eric Hitchens. Yes, his middle name really is Eric. Um, maybe a comic name to us now, but um, it's A was the name of his father, and B, of course, was the first name of a writer, polemicist, essayist, and political thinker uh, on whom Christopher has written a book and uh, from whom he can rightly claim descendancy and influence, Eric Blair, whose pen name, of course, was George Orwell. You can call Christopher Hitch. You might call him The Hitch. You can address him as Mr. Hitchens um, or Christopher. But if you wish to emerge from his presence unscathed, don't even think of calling him Chris. I have to explain why it's me here, why it is I here introducing this evening. Um, an evening during which Christopher and I were scheduled to shoot the breeze, him in, in, in Washington, D.C., and myself here. I can't claim to call him a um, friend with anything like the depth of meaning that several of the people we're going to hear from this evening can, but I can at least claim the privilege of having debated with him by his side at Hay on Y and um, uh, here in London for Intelligence Squared. And, and I can claim, too, that we call each other old horse, like Stanley Eukridge, or Old Crumpet, like Barney Phipps, or Ufi Prosser, um, for we share a love and a great passion for the works of P.G. Woodhouse, and such things form a bond. The first thing I want to disabuse you of is the notion that Christopher is an earnest um, and humorless political and, 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 and utterly sanctimonious figure as he is sometimes painted. He has fought for all kinds of causes all his life. He has stood up against bullies. He has outraged those who assumed he was a natural ally. He has poured all his energies, talents, and enthusiasms in a thousand directions, but always, always with wit, with panache, with a sumptuously exquisite use of language, with a deep understanding that the connection between style and substance is absolute, a true thing badly expressed is a lie. Christopher has opened up debate, given voice to ideas and causes that without his talents would have been less ventilated and less understood. He has done so from a position of learning and understanding that earns the accolade, no matter how unloved and forlorn it is in Anglo-Saxon nations, of intellectual. Like me, he's Jewish on his mother's side, the side that counts. Um, like me, he's busy and productive, but unlike me, he is not a cheap whore. <laughs> well, I thank you for that applause. Um, I say that, I'm actually quite an expensive whore, and I like to think I'm a good whore, um, because I kiss. Um, but I am... <laughs> I am way out of Christopher's major league. Almost everybody is. Uh, it's no accident that the great associations in his life, um, um, uh, um, uh, of which he was at the absolute center, um, of one of the most remarkable, talented, and tight circle of friends in British cultural life for the last 50 years, who are all distinguished, not only by their supreme intelligence, their speed of wit, uh, their range of learning and breadth of knowledge, but also quite simply at the very level of the sentence by their miraculous ability to put one word after another uh, in the service of poetry, the essay, the novel, criticism, story, or political screed. Certainly he was a committed traveler, protester, pamphleteer, propagandist for the far left, a Trotskyist, an international brigadier of the old school, um, traveling from Cyprus to Cambodia, from Cuba to Paris, a, a soixante huitard, an old-fashioned, hard-left, bolshe dissident and dissenter. Yet somehow, Christopher has emerged, I won't say as the most important member of that group, but that would be a meaninglessly cheap and pointless thing to say, but um, as a very, very surprisingly influential and important figure of our times. He has become, in the words of Willie Loman, someone of a cunt. He's, he's torn into sacred cows like Mother Teresa and Princess Diana. He's horrified many of his 
apparently natural liberal left allies with his attacks on Clinton, his fervent support for the war in Iraq, and he's risen to the top of many little black books of revenge thanks to his bravura attacks on religionists, spiritual snake oil salesmen, established churches. But risen, he certainly has, to a point of fame, adulation, and attention that I think has surprised no one more than himself. So what we're here, perhaps most of all, to celebrate is that someone in this cultural desert of celebrity worship, counter-enlightenment malice, and revealed scripture tyranny, someone has shown that there is still in this world, especially amongst the intelligent and curious young, a furious appetite for ideas, for knowledge, for thought, and for the questioning of authority. For being, in a word from one of his best books, a contrarian. In that sense, Christopher Hitchens can rightly be described as a hero. Not of the left or of the neocon right, not of libertarianism or of liberal humanism, but a hero of the mind. Well, he's certainly my hero, 